the first on uh, the first workshop um, uh, we saw why uh, culture has an impact so just to have all um, these uh, these numbers uh, in in our heads and uh, where lies the impact just to have a quick reminder we have all the mobility stakes. So you see the Trump station from Festival Goers is a big um, post of emissions, as well as artistic teams and artwork. We saw that plane uh, plays a big part in this uh, emission. Then there is all uh, the stakes from uh, drinks, what, what we drink and what we eat uh, in the cultural field. Uh, which has also a big impact. And uh, then we will see that the, there are all the uh, post of emission that can have an impact. And if you if you see for a large festival, it's always uh, the mobility stakes that uh, lies in uh, the biggest post of emission. So, um, yeah, to tell you quickly, um... I'm based in Tournai in Belgium. I'm half French, half German. I worked for 20 years in the north of France in the performing arts field. And um, in from 2018 to 2022, I was uh, in charge of the office for theater and dance of the French Institute in Germany, in Berlin. And uh, from there, I started reflecting on how um, our professional practices had to change uh, facing the ecological um, disaster <laughs> we're just facing. And um, so I initiated uh, an initiative a dialogue, which started with uh, monthly online meetings with people from all over Europe to talk about it, to share perspectives, uh, also knowledge, because there are some countries like uh, Great Britain or Scotland, where a lot has been done in the last few years, and um, and quickly we thought about um, how could we uh, facilitate action. So um, I will just sh uh, share my screen, maybe, so that I can start my presentation. Um, okay. So um, <clears throat> this European initiative I started from Berlin was called Where to Land, um, uh, Embedding European Performing Arts in the New Climate Regime. It was, um, so I will just tell you a little bit about the content of what I will tell you. So I will talk about the initiatives, about a very short summary of the outcomes, and then share a few thoughts about the ecological redirection. Uh, the needed systemic changes and the value of cooperation and also maybe give a little uh, feedback on what I see one year later after this uh, forum. So um, <clears throat> this initiative was started with uh, um, a lot of European institutions you see here with also expert partners from various countries from the shift project or Les Augures in France, the Aktionsnetzwerk Nachhaltigkeit in Germany, Chloe Sustainability, which is in Spain, Creative Carbon Scotland, and Julie's Bicycle in Great Britain. Um, yes, so um, we uh, so we started a dialogue, and in October we organized a forum in Strasbourg. I will tell you a little bit more about that, and the outcome of this is a report. Um, maybe after my speech, I will share the link so that you can download the whole report. Um, the, the forum we organized in Strasbourg was a two-day forum with uh, 130 participants from all over Europe. They were gathered uh, around keynote speeches, but mostly about around workshops where they had to discuss commitments and action plans. Um, we had people with a variety of profiles, uh, so artists, programmers, administrative roles, communication, technical jobs, professional organization, training organization, national institutes, European networks, local authorities, and experts. 
We had people from 25 countries with uh, an over-representation of French and German people, which is uh, linked to the to the um, um, partnership constellation and also to the to the place we were in Strasbourg. Um, what we did for today is we had some keynotes by Samuel Valenzi, who we uh, worked for the ship project uh, on the let's decarbonize culture report and uh, also by Giada Calvano and also by uh, um, Ifigenia Taksupulu. And then we had 10 workshops on some issues you've been already talking about, uh, mobility of artists, mobility of audiences, buildings and energy, circular economy, impact assessment, uh, what common method methodology we could have, training of professionals. Um, we had uh, some transversal themes like the question of sober, sober of degrowth or sober vision in the sector, and the question of how we could steer the transition of the performing arts sector on the European scale. Um, but we also talked about sustainability uh, through art, so through the narratives of art, um, just we talked. So we talked about the material impact of art, but also the symbolic impact. How art can also be a, a factor for transition in the uh, society as a whole. Uh, just to show you the contradiction you can have between these two dimensions. Here you have a piece art piece that was shown during COP twenty one in Paris two thousand fifteen. So you had a here, this ice blocks, um, and by it was a, a, a work called Ice Watch by Olafur Iliasson. Um, but the materiality of this piece is ice, 80 tons of ice, which were uh, taken out of a fjord in Greenland and then shipped um, uh, with all the uh, emissions linked to the transportation you can have. So, yeah, just to reflect on this. What we did, um, uh, so the outcomes. Um, uh, or what we did, we prepared like uh, in climate uh, conferences, we had some commitment papers for each workshop. On the first day, the groups negotiated the commitments, so they had to agree on this and rewrote it them. And on the second day, they, uh, they wrote some action plans on an individual level, a systemic and political levels. What we can say is that faced with the picture of the current ecological disaster, participant proposed commitments and associated actions that reflect a form of radicalism. It is not a set of definitive solution. It is, uh, um, I would say, a basis to be actively discussed and transformed into action in each context. Um, yeah. Um, here I just show an anthology of measures you will can you can go deeper into. Uh, on mobility issues, there is the idea of rethinking the size of venues and events. So uh, in relation to the capacity to bring in audiences, uh, primary local one using low impact modes of transport. On issues of ar artistic creation, there was the idea of re redefining artistic value and re review the criteria for evaluating art, value the small scale, allow for intimate encounters um locally rooted non-replicable projects so eco design each production create materials passport to inform buyers about their origin and their environmental and social impacts on buildings and energy the idea that only that if you want to build a new cultural building um, it should only be done if it is uh, efficient from an energetic an energetic point of view on digital issues because digital is also a big topic. Um, adopt a digital service only if it, it is if it controls the amount of data exchanged and stored is open source strictly pro protects personal data does not exploit personal data for commercial purposes and allows for the use of older IT equipment. On recruitment skill uh, and skills include in envir environmental responsibility in all jobs from to, uh, starting in 2023. On degrowth, uh, assess the ecological, social and cultural impacts using the 
donut model. I don't go into this because I think the next speaker will speak about that. Um, create a, a, a mandatory pan-European evaluation system that makes subsidies conditional on an 80% degrowth by 2030. One of the keys of degrowth uh, is at the heart of artistic creation. So I don't go deeper into this, but it's just to show you that there is a wide bunch of measures, um, which also came out was a kind of political roadmap uh, with uh, six typologies of measures. Um, so the idea to produce open source tools for environmental diagnosis. Uh, funding climate climate awareness training, so train um, gra grant reviewers on climate issues, uh, enable the funding of training on cl climate issues for teams to be included in the funding of cultural project, fund learning by doing pilot projects, and create dedicated funds to finance expenses uh, related to degrowth efforts, like the idea of having an eco-responsible mobility fund within the Culture Moves Europe scheme for artists who do not have access to this fund for the ad additional cost of eco-responsible travel. Investing in infrastructure, meaning renovate, improve rail infrastructure, developing low carbon mobility alternatives, conducting a global energy diagnosis of theaters. Uh, coordinate efforts to promote cooperation. Um, I think maybe uh, you already talked about that, but uh, the, the value of cooperation, of rationalization, of touring, for example, um, of centralizing the purchase of renewable energies for theaters. So yeah, the idea that cooperation is one of the key words for the future. Make subsidies eco-conditional, mandatory carbon budget and reduction targets, mandatory training of man management and in climate issue and eco-design, integration of responsible digital criteria in all calls for projects. So this idea of linking cross-compliance or eco-conditionality and support schemes comes from the example of what happened in Great Britain, where in 2012, the Arts Council introduced eco-conditionality for its subsidies while structuring, and this is important, taught, important at the same time, an ambitious support program for players combining training, coaching, and free evaluation tools. It entrusted the implementation of this program to a dedicated organization, which is Julie's Bicycle. And the result of this is that they have a measurable re reduction of 35% of greenhouse gas emissions within the British sector supported by the Arts Council within the last 10 years. Um, just a few thoughts about the ecological um, 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 redirection. If you look at the regulatory, at the legal framework in Europe, um, you have um, so you have the Paris Agreement uh, with uh, that sets a target uh, to stay well below two degrees by two hundred and one uh, to, by the end of the century, <laughs> um, and um, this has been translated in the European Climate Law, which uh, sets a legally binding target of zero net greenhouse gas emission by 2050, but that also sets uh, an intermediate target by uh, uh, 2030, um, which means reducing by at least 55% compared to 1990 levels. Knowing that in fact that since 1990, if you look at the global emissions, uh, if you look at national emissions, yes, we started going down. But if you look at the global emissions, they still went up. So if we take this seriously, that means that, in fact, we have to lower our emissions by 80% in seven or eight years, which is um, a huge, um, a huge change. Um, yeah, so I will not come back on this. I will pass this. But you know that there are some physical impacts of the clim climate change and that above two degrees here, you have all the region in the world where it will be quite impossible to live uh, if we reach four degrees um, the, in red you've got the or you have the number of days per year where the temperature where would be above the deadly threshold so there is really an urgency to change um, here you've got uh, the the 
impact of uh, a French citizen, which is like 10 tons of CO2 per year, and we have to go down to two tons, knowing that two tons is, for example, uh, if you make a return flight to New York from Europe, it's about two tons. If you eat meat on a, a red meat diet, it's 2.5 tons per year. So we've got to change a lot of things. What do we need? What measures do we need? Uh, in Strasbourg, we, need, we worked with this idea that there are individual measures that in, are based on individual choices of people and businesses, but that we also have um, to reflect on systemic uh, choices, so which are based on the reorganization of our business, of our sector, of, of the organization of the sector. And to reach this uh, systemic changes, we need, of course, changes in the regulations and policies, so political changes. Um, there, was, there was a study that was done for the European Commission that was trying to quantify what would happen if we only relied on consumer or uh, on a consumer oriented policy, meaning if we only rely on individual choices by citizens uh, who would try to emit at uh, as little as possible. And it showed that the maximum we could get through this kind of policy was 25% of reduction. If we want to reach higher reduction, we need deeper social change. We need the business models and policies to change. Um, yeah, I, I translated this, but I, I don't know if you talked about that already, the typology of measures by the shift project. Um, uh, um, Eloise, I, I don't know. Um, did you talk about that? Uh, yeah, I quickly presented uh, last uh, last week, but you can do it again. I think uh, a, a reminder is always great because these are difficult uh, problematics. So yeah, so the, the 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 shift project uh, did a, a, um, with a lot of people working on this for two years. They did a typology of measures, starting from the transparent measures, which are the most easy ones. Uh, which do not really change the way uh, the sector works, um, like reducing the carbon content of meals does not change the way we disseminate artworks. Um, then you've got defensive measures, uh, which are measures where you avoid energy intensive options, some positive measures that are already more difficult because you need um, to invest money if you, for example, want to um, make thermal renovation of buildings and then the most difficult ones uh, but which have the biggest impact which are the offensive measures re which means reorganizing the sector around energy climate issue with the idea for example of territorializing so sharing tour dates for international artists between several cultural venues in the same area increase the proportion of local artists in programming, reducing the size of major cultural events. And what the SHIFT project that did then, they applied this typology of measure, measures to some scenarios, to some, to some known uh, footprints of theaters, festivals. And they showed that if we want to reach the uh, minus 80% target, in fact, we need to apply all the typology of measures. So we can, cannot uh, only do the easy ones, uh, like um, making vegetarian food in theaters does not, is not enough. Um, so we need all the typology of measures to happen. One year later, just to tell you a little bit, uh, so um, uh, Where to Land was an initiative I started with some partners, but there was no will to structure this um, more. I mean, from the participants or from the European networks. And I will say a little bit about this. I think this is significant for what is just happening um, in the sector on the, and on a European scale. So where to land was, uh, is part of the history now. It was something that happened one year ago, but there is no activity, um, no structured activity going on on this anymore. Um, one year later, I think uh, I just tell you what I see in the sector today. I don't know if you know this curve of, of change um, 
that was uh, established by Elizabeth Kubler-Ross um, that uh, face, says that facing a change, any change you have in your life, you first face a shock and then you try to push this change away. You deny the reality of the change and then you start dealing with it within, inside of you. Um, and you go down to some depression, you try to negotiate, you try to see if uh, if maybe this change could be reversed, if you could uh, maybe not be part of, if, of it, if you could have an exception uh, for your own situation, before then starting to accept it and being, become active in this. And my feeling is that we are in this moment where people are, are aware that uh, there needs, there is a lot to be done, but that there is a big negotiation around it in the cultural sector. Um, I just share this, but I don't want to uh, to to spend too much time on this. I think this is interesting, maybe to be shared. It's the discourses of climate delay that were in the typology by the. University of Cambridge. Um, it's a typology of the discourses you can hear in the sector and you hear in society as a whole who that accept the existence of climate change but justify inaction or inadequate action through different means like this, the idea of redirecting, redirecting responsibility <laughs> or um, um, what I hear a lot in the sector is the free rider excuse, which means that um, why, if I start acting, then I will have a disadvantage in the competition that exists in the sector. This is something I hear a lot. Um, so if you will, if you like to go into this, it's interesting, I think. Um, Non-exhaustive list of arguments and fears encountered, fear of new constraints, fear of associated work, fear for artistic freedom, fear for intercultural re relations, um, the, the fact that we are in a competitive sector and which makes it difficult to for cooperation to go further sometimes, and also the temptation, temptation to preserve privileges. Could there not be a new cultural exception in the new climate regime? Um, this is a, a here. It's just for the French speaking. This is I, I will not tell you who wrote this, but this was written in the in this summer in a on a, an online paper where someone is advocating for une exception culturelle écologique heureuse uh, for a happy uh, um, cultural exception. Um, if you look at the European scale. Um, uh, here I have an excerpt of uh, the a report by Perform Europe, which is a, an important European project. And they go through, the, their model is the sustainable development goals, and they go through all these development goals and say how they will commit to it. And then coming to the um, ecological part, the first thing they say is ecological sustainability should be in balance with other values. So as if ecological sustainability um, you had to negotiate with this, having in mind other values. I think, um, um, and it's the only goal of the sustainable development goals where they tell this. Um, and I can also tell you a little bit on about the complexity of the dialogue right now on the European level. Um, the European Commission published the OPOLE recommendations, which is a, a, a um, the result of the European Theatre Forum that happened in Opole in Poland in in 2000 uh, in April this year, I was invited because I, I initiated this uh, Where to Land initiative, and so in the groups on policies I brought in with others this idea of eco conditionality of uh, subsidies, and um, there were a lot of discussions about this. But at the end, we agreed on this. And uh, in the report uh, that was done in the Apollo recommendation, this has completely disappeared. Um, it was replaced by the idea of a voluntary certification based on the European uh, Theatre Convention, ETC Theatre Green Book, which is, of course, totally different. So just to show you that there, this is not as easy as possible, and that there are also 
some conservative forces that drive against um, this. One last, and then I will stop. Um, uh, one last and concrete outcome of um, of uh, uh, where to land is this project, which is called Coprog. Uh, I've been working on, and that is now uh, online. It's a website uh, called Coprog um, that. Um, is the idea of uh, that came from this idea that we need some tools to facilitate the cooperation between programmers to build coherent touring, which is geographically and time-wise um, 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 efficient. So it's a platform conceived as a free and open source common good to allow programmers to share and identify converging projects to achieve time and geography efficient touring with the aim uh, to limit the ecological footprint of performing arts. This is just an image of what uh, it looks like inside. Um, so this is one project that is uh, was on the platform where you see um, um, yeah, how this tour is being built and that um, probably it could be more uh, built more coherently, but this tool helps this. So just to tell you that there are things happening, um, which I think is positive. And um, yeah, so I will stop here and um, maybe answer some questions or remarks.